Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Artist. Welcome to my Big Schools Green Screen Champions project. As an artist, I work in lots of different fields, from sculpture to digital animation to drawing, pretty much everything. And one of the things I'm really, really passionate about is sustainable design and kind of recycling and the environment. So the project I've got for you here is all about exploring how can we design for the future and think about things like sustainability in design and thinking about designing things that last for the future. Future, but also have a small footprint on the environment. We're also going to be kind of exploring different techniques and skills that are used in industries such as video gaming and TV and film. In this first video we're going to be exploring how can we redesign an outdoor learning space post COVID-19 for Alexandra Palace. So we're going to be looking at sort of architectural designs and drawings and you're going to be coming up with your own conceptual sort of idea looking at collage and drawing to explore how could you design an outdoor learning space. So we're going to look at just a couple of basic sort of skills. For this you'll need just obviously paper, pencil and a ruler, preferably a long ruler that sort of covers a whole length but don't worry if you haven't got one long enough. This first one's going to be one point perspective and I'm just going to show you how you can use lines of perspective to help you draw three dimensional shapes and create distance in your designs or distance in your drawings and the illusion of perspective. First thing I'm going to do is just draw a, a line from point to point, like so, from corner to corner and then again on the other corner to corner as well. Okay, and these are my lines of perspective. So everything can go in towards the distance following these lines of perspective. And we call this point in the middle of those lines the vanishing point. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my horizon, which is a horizontal line. So a horizon straight through there. And what that shows us is that the horizon is like if you're standing on the beach, the horizon is as far as the eye can see. So if I was standing on the beach looking out to the sea, this is where sort of the sea would would end and I'd have maybe get a sunset kind of that would set on this horizon. And what these lines of perspective do for us is they show they give us a guide of things going into the distance. I'll show you. So if I wanted to um, draw for example a road or a track okay in front of me I can draw from this vanishing point outwards. So for example I'll just show you if this was a road I could draw like a, like a squiggly dirt track sort of road. So if I start off at the top and I go like this and I go wider with those lines towards me. Like this. What I get is the illusion of kind of like a river or a, a road that I could follow and as I go into the distance it gets smaller. I could draw for example a tree up here. Okay, I just have to start draw, draw marking a tree. Right, da, da, da. tree come down here like that. All right, and then my next tree would fit in between this point of my perspective and this point of my perspective. So it would fit inside here if it was following this line to perspective. So start, start another one. It would fit there. There you go, like that. And then the next one would fit carrying on in those lines of perspective. So we can use these lines of perspective as sort of, sort of a rough guide to show how things move into the distance. You can draw as many lines as you want as long as those lines come out of the vanishing point. So I might draw a line from much further down here because my the tops of my people's heads aren't going to be as high as the trees this side. So I'm going to start with just a little, little head like this and then down to a body, someone just sort of standing there at the side of the road. But then if they were walking towards me, as they walked towards me, they'd, their feet would follow this line here and their head would follow this line here. And so as I, as I followed up with my fingers, I could draw them here again and I'd draw a silhouette of a person here, their shoulders down to their feet just down there and you can see that. It looks like this person's in the foreground and this person's in the background because of perspective. Um, I also want to show you how we can draw something three-dimensional like a, a box. So if I draw a big square here, just in my foreground here, which is in front of me. But then what I can do is I can join the corners of the square up to my vanishing point. 
points. So this one's basically nearly done anyway. So you can join that one there, and then this one here. And then if I draw another line just on the top here, a horizontal line to match this horizontal line here, what that shows is it's like we're looking at a box in front of us above the horizon as well. So I could draw a big rectangle here. Now, again, that rectangle is two dimensional, but if I join the corners of the rectangle down to my vanishing point, like so, it does start to get confusing with all the lines. But now that I've got joined them together, I can see I've got this really long cuboid that's going into the distance if I just shade in that bit there. And I can also make it shorter by, I can draw a line through where I want it to stop going into the distance. So I can draw a line straight through there and then straight up again where it meets its, its edge there, where it meets its edge there. And now you can see that's like a big three dimensional cube, cuboid, sorry, just floating in the midair. And I could connect it down to the ground, like so, with some long, sort of vertical like pit posts. But <clears throat> when I do the second post in the background, all I need to do is from my vanishing point, just draw a line out. And then I know that's where that post finishes there. It's gonna finish from that corner there, it's gonna go straight down. A rectangle, a long thin rectangle here, join to the lines perspective like so, and draw a long line down the side. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna just start again by drawing the cross lines to use as my guide for perspective. And I'm gonna start to experiment with how I can create a kind of uh, environmental design. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is cut your objects and things and try and fit them into your perspective lines to kind of create the illusion of things. As it's gonna be a garden. You're going to start by wanting to look for some things in magazines with landscapes, trees and bushes and things like that because that's going to help you build up some kind of texture. You're going to want to hand draw things as well as much as using collage but collage is great because you can always sort of start with something. I'm just going to start by cutting kind of some sections out of this grass. Almost like sort of a patchwork. So make sure when you're using scissors, you're being really, really careful because make sure you do have someone nearby because they can be quite dangerous. I'm using these quite sharp scissors. One thing I'm going to show you as well is that you can actually, you can kind of cut things so that they fit in, in into your lines of perspective as well. So you can place your ruler sort of over something if you want it to sort of fit in a certain route towards your your uh, vanishing point. And you can just draw a line following that ruler mark and then just cut that and then it will fit just inside anywhere really. So it'll even fit sort of further up so it looks like it's in the distance or it can be in the foreground down here. Let the images lead your, your collage a little bit. So don't think too much about exactly what things are gonna look like. Start with the pictures that you have around you and start by just composing, sort of putting things together to create an image. And then you can kind of, your ideas will come alive from that. It's a nice way to work with collage. Construct the landscape from sort of triangles and sort of geometric shapes and forms and f sort of follow your, your lines of perspective. I've got to decide whether or not my shelter is gonna be sort of right in the foreground or further in distance. And I'm gonna put my shelter around here as if I'm standing and it's just in front of me. I'm looking at it a little bit like this one here. You can see it's like kind, kind of a platform. And you'll notice that the platform is horizontal, so it matches the horizon. I'm gonna start by drawing a guideline just out, just below my original line here, like so. And then I'm going to have a go at drawing a horizontal line here. So that's flat along, so it matches my horizon. Okay, where it touches the, the line, I'm gonna just draw a line down and then another horizontal line under it and connect that together so I get this a rectangle. What I'm going to do is join up my, my vanishing point now to the corner points of the rectangle. So watch, so from there to the vanishing point like that, and then from this point here, so the bottom corner of the rectangle to the vanishing point like that. All right, you can see now it looks like that rectangle is sort of floating in midair. 
If I want to cut the rectangle the end off, all I have to do is just draw a horizontal line through where I want to chop the end off and then a little line up to show the corner and you can see now that looks like a solid sort of rectangle shooting into the distance and all I have to do is draw a line straight down like this I'm going to draw one line straight down there to match this line here and then I could do another one so I'm just kind of putting in these sort of pillars so I'm going to cut this section out here and this just shows you how you can use sort of found images to inspire and lead your designs of your pavilion or of your like outdoor space. The front, front of this building, this sort of pavilion space. And keep that there. And I was thinking how I can start to Put in some, so I'm going to use this side of this house or this building, cut out these long strips and turn them into kind of structural beams or poles. And in this one, I'm going to cut the pole so it matches in between the two two lines of perspective there. So put that in a kind of a foreground like that and kind of build up in layers and obviously things are going to get smaller as they get into the background as well. We could put some detail in the sky as well so I've just cut some sort of triangular bits of blue out from a couple of images and what we can do is we can just sort of match it. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect that looks quite cool in there like that. Kind of create a nice sort of texture of different blues up. Kind of leaving gaps as well. So if you cut everything in sort of triangles, then you know they're going to follow your lines of perspective really well. Collage is all about overlapping. My sort of grass colour. And just lay it on my vanishing point there. So I can see my vanishing point here. And I'm just going to draw sort of a where you like and gradually get looser and looser and, and larger as it comes out towards the bottom like that and that sort of follows my lines of perspective as well and I'm going to cut this out and then I can just sort of cut it to fit more wavy sort of snake into the distance so I found these students these pictures of these people walking to school. So she's in my foreground, right? So me pacing her there shows that she's sort of in front of me. She's one of the closer figures towards me. But as people get into the distance, they are going to get smaller. So I put them, they're going to be sort of like further, sort of more towards the vanishing point like that. Really simply draw a character. So rather than just doing something like this, okay, I'm going to show you a neat little trick of how you can draw like a figure of a person and then you can cut them out or you could draw them straight onto your image. You're going to hold the pencil like, a, like you're going to write with it and then just sort of like shade, sort of colour in. And start with like a, a circular sort of shape, just sort of shading in sort of a circular shape. And then as you get further down, go thinner and then suddenly go much wider and then keep the width of your shade shading like this as you go all the way down start to go a bit thinner and thinner and thinner and then just wider at the bottom and that kind of creates the illusion of a figure if we cut that out let me start with the head down to the shoulders down to the legs and then down to the feet like that. So it's just kind of a little sort of squibble, but we're always starting small with the head, wider with the shoulders, and down the body. Head. This one's going to be a bit bigger. And then the legs, I'm going to put one leg sort of stepping outwards like that, and one leg sort of straight down like that. You could do a bit of shadow. So to make your figure sort of stand out a little bit, just a few lines of shadow on the floor below them. So this one here.
going to take my ruler and kind of just any areas which I want to stand out a little bit more. I'm just going to start by just drawing in a few sort of like black lines just to highlight the sort of structures and things I drew in with pencil. And what that will also do is if we can, if you want, you could hatch in take the rest of your lines, so the pencil lines that you've drawn, or if you've drawn them hard or, or soft, it will make those lines look kind of less, like they won't stand out as much in your picture. So it won't matter if you've made any mistakes or anything, because when you start working in with some pen, It'll make all your pencil do some trees as well. So in between perspective line going into the distance here and my top one here, I'm going to have just to go, I'm just going to sort of freehand draw almost like lightning. Start doing some mark making, do some leaves. You can kind of use a pen to mark make and things in there. Just I wouldn't draw each individual leaf, but just using the pen just to sort of make a few marks sort of comma sort of shapes. I'm just gonna sort of mark in the horizon and distance there a little bit. Cool. And there we have it, a really cool kind of concept design based at looking at architectural design and also environment, artists from video games and, and film. But we've created our own kind of park space just using collage, some drawing skills and some drawing techniques.